I'm Jeffrey Brown of the PBS NewsHour, and I'm joined now by Mary Roach. We're going to talk about her latest book, Grunt, The Curious Science of Humans at War. The Curious Science of Humans at War. What does that mean? Well, this is a military science book, but it's yeah. not the more typical weapons and bombs and gee whiz, whiz bang stuff that you see on the Discovery Channel. It's more the other side of it. It's it's the science behind keeping people alive and putting them back mm -hmm. together. So it's about heat stroke and flies and heavy loads and panic and fear and all of the things that mm -hmm. soldiers and Marines deal with day by day. It's not the kind of stuff that you see being made into right, the high motion bomb. pictures you right. know, or the, uh, you know, the high drama motion yeah. picture stuff. It's kind of stuff that falls between the cracks but is really interesting. And well, that's why, you know, that's, that's what led you into it? You were looking behind the scenes a little bit. Well, I got involved in this in a kind of strange way. I was in India reporting on uh, the world's hottest chili pepper, the boot jalokia, and there's a chili pepper eating contest, which is unbelievable. People are carried away in ambulances. and, uh, and it, So I was reporting yeah. on that, and someone yeah. said the Indian military had weaponized this chili pepper. So I went over to the la this lab that the Indian Defense Ministry maintains to interview those folks. And while I was there, they were working on a leech repellent. They were they had the chili pepper work. There was all kinds of stuff going on. I thought military science sort yeah. of more esoteric than I thought, and a little more intriguing. And that's kind of what got the ball rolling. So I don't have a background in m the military. I don't have well. My dad served, but he got a hernia in basic training and got kicked out. So. No. So, so yeah. once you pick a subject, how do you pursue it? What happens? Well, there's a period of random flailing where I am uh, just sort of putting out feelers and calling around and seeing what's out there. And in this mm -hmm. case, there were places I'd never heard of, like the Naval Submarine Medical Research Lab or the mm -hmm. um, all kinds of you know, the, the military entomology units and just there's branches of science that I didn't realize existed. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of sending out feelers and and mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, also going, uh, there's a book office at the Pentagon mm -hmm. who will kind of rubber stamp you, not that they can make anyone talk to you, but yeah. they can say, eh, we're kind of okay. We don't really, Mary Roach writing about science, yeah, who cares? Right. So right. that helped uh, but, but deal with some of the kind of institutional yeah. paranoia that I might have dealt with, yeah. But that's the first revelation in the book. I, I mean, for you and in the book, and I've done stories for our program about what's this kind of work behind yeah. the scenes, but just that it exists so much, right? That yes. there is so much science right. applied to the military today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That there would be a whole unit uh, devoted to heat stroke. I mean, the, the, you know, the statistics on heat stroke and, and so, you know, the, the fatalities that occur. People, people don't, you know, you hear a lot about IEDs and... and yeah. Um, sort of the more typical wounds of combat, but you don't really hear about all people dying from heat stroke or rhabdomyolysis or, you know, the, the, the things that are uh, happening day, you know, daily basis, not right. just when things go kinetic and the bullets right. are flying, but just every day you're you know, dealing with temperatures that are, uh, you know, can potentially lethal. So, uh, so yeah, it was uh, fascinating to find these facilities, I mean, there's this thing called the cook box, which is this, this box with a treadmill and they can turn the humidity up and the temperature. They sort of create yeah. a miserable afternoon in the Middle East and you put on a pack and they were looking for biomarkers that would uh -huh. help identify who's somebody who genetically is not going to do well in heat that maybe right. we shouldn't put in that situation. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 What was, th was this along the usual lines of journalism of one thing leading to another? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, I was reporting at Walter Reed, for example, on, I was uh, at a surgery, it was a urethra repair, I was talking about urogenital trauma, which yeah. is something you're seeing more of because the explosive, you know, the bombs are bigger and also yeah. um, the medical care is faster and better. So more people are surviving with right. injuries higher up the body. Right. And while I was there, someone said, oh, by the way, um, they're doing some preliminary work on the first U.S. penis transplant. So right. that led to another chapter. And right. that happens right. all the time. Yeah. I don't really know going into a book where I'll yeah. end up. So yeah. it's an interesting kind of circuitous But I mean, journey. that's a yes. perfect example of the sensitive areas you went to. I mean, literally, but I mean, yes. uh, <laughs> traumatic areas yes. for, for, for soldiers, for military personnel. 
you didn't know you were probably going to end there, right? Uh, no. So what was that like to go from a kind of, well, you know, who knows where this will yes. lead to yeah. some very, very private places? Yeah. yeah. It w well, yeah, it was it, uh, the kind of reporting I don't typically do. I'm kind yeah. of just a goober going around like, oh, this is kind of interesting. A goober? <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm, I, so I found myself... Um, talking to this man who had uh, the, the the person whose surgery I had seen, who yeah. stepped on an IED, had lost most of one leg, part of another, right. and I asked him to tell me this story. And you know, because someone had said, "Oh, the first thing a soldier says in that situation is, is my junk okay?" Right. And he, that's not what he said. What he said, he was a unit commander, and he was trying to see he's yelling who's hurt who's hit and he's trying to stand up and he's missing a leg i mean it was so moving and right. uh nothing i had ex anticipated mm -hmm. encountering or writing about so yeah. it was um a different experience for me as a human and as a writer yeah but you yeah. were able to get people to open up and tell you their stories uh, yeah i was people were were actually really generous and forthcoming, not mm -hmm. just with their time and their knowledge, but with their experiences, yeah. 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 Well, what is your, do you have a sense of how the military and the science community working with the military is doing uh, in cases like that, or, or even more generally? Yes, um, the survival rate is up in the 90% now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. S uh, medical you know, that golden hour of stabilizing a patient, stopping the bleeding, first of all. I mean, you mean the bleeding out is the number one cause right. of death or um, an injury to the chest and lung collapse being the second one. And the, right. and the medical personnel, uh, the medics and the corpsmen have gotten really quite good at stabilizing, evacuating somebody, getting them um, out to where they need to get to. So in that sense, keeping people alive, they're right. doing doing really well. Of course, the injuries are still life-changing. Well, and, and the in injuries yeah. internally, of course, yes, which internally, is what we right. hear yeah. so often about the PTSD yes. and the continuing psychological right. trauma. Yes. What did you see in that area? I don't, I didn't, ha I don't have a chapter on, yeah, on no, PTSD, I know, but, I but it was, you, you know, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a lot of work going on, on these days uh, in looking at the physical organic effects of a you know a mm -hmm. blast and and the changes to the brain and and how that affects personality mm -hmm. down the road similar to the um, what's go what goes on with football players yeah. you know like with a with a shock to the brain yeah so um, but that doesn't lead us to a cure mm -hmm. you know it, it, prevention is is the answer and you can't pr if you're going into a combat situation mm -hmm. you can't prevent blasts mm -hmm. any. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so there's a be there's better understanding. There's some new avenues of understanding now, um, but uh, ultimately, you have to stay out of harm's way right. in order not to get harmed, and right. you can't really do that if you're a soldier or marine. And right. You, you you referred to yourself as a goober, which is, I think you also say in the introduction. You call yourself a spotlight operator. What what? How do you see what you're doing? No, I, I actually I was saying I'm you know I'm not really. You know, I was saying, you know, things like PTSD are really are in the spotlight and they deserve to be in the yeah, spotlight. I'm yeah. kind of the goober with a flashlight. I'm kind of like, well, actually, this is in maggots are interesting as well. They're used. They were, they, you know, medically they were discovered in World War One, which I found fascinating. Yeah. They, they do a kind of natural debridement to a wound. So I got off on a tangent about um, maggot therapy, which is a, you know, a, dis a military discovery. And it's all and it's uh, still used today. Uh -huh. And. That kind of, so that, I tend to be covering maggots and not the big dramatic, right. you know, there are people who do that really well, and yeah. you know, like people like yourself. I mean, people who are, well. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, well, uh, but I mean, you're laughing, because I mean, I, I, I'm partially asking, because sometimes you're, you're described as a humorist. I mean, you're, you're an entertaining writer. Yes. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you take us Hopefully, to, yeah. well, yes, but yes. I mean, you take us to yes. interesting places with a, uh, an unusual and 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 yeah. and often humorous light on it. Yes. But this is not. But some of the places you took you go in this place are not humorous. Right? No, they're not. So for the, the, that was an awkward balance for me. Yeah. Um, I had some trepidation about my usual tone and how do I fit that into a book about very serious, very um, disturbing topics. Yeah. So sometimes, I mean, what I ended up doing is 
the humor is more poked at, uh, directed at myself right. as kind of the clueless outsider, which I truly was and am, really. So, you know, it's me in, uh, I was at Aberdeen Proving Ground where they were testing, um, uh, it's a mine-resistant armored personnel carrier, which is supposed to keep you safe in the event that you drive over a large bomb. Yeah. Uh, and they were showing me the interior. It's very stripped down because they don't want to have, they, you know, if any weight in that vehicle is going toward protection. There's no bathroom, there's no microwave. And I said to the guy, oh, it's nice though that you have some cup holders here. And he looked at me like, Mary, those are rifle holders. <laughs> you know, just like, because I'm, uh, I've just, it's a whole other world, the, the military and combat. And I'm scrambling to kind of wrap my head around it all. Yeah. And sometimes the humor comes from that. And sometimes it's historical material, right. like the OSS trying to develop a shark <laughs> repellent in World yeah. War II. Um, all right, well, yeah. you got there. Uh, the book is Grunch, The Curious Science of Humans at War. Mary Roach, thank you very much. Thank you so much.